Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With My dear brothers and sisters, we have completed the 40 days of Lent and have now entered the Paschal Triduum. Let us enter these Easter three days, celebrating the Lord's passion and resurrection with clean hearts and pure minds. As we gather at the table of the Lord, let us pause to remember the times we have not lived according to God's will. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which our only begotten Son, your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a one-year-old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord, but the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes the word of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. With your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will no, have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
An elderly gentleman was invited to his old friend's house for dinner one evening. He was so impressed by the way his friend preceded every request to his wife with endearing terms, calling her honey, my love, sweetheart, pumpkin. The couple had been married for almost 70 years, and they were clearly in love. While his wife was off in another room, the man leaned over and said to his friend, You know, I think it's so great and wonderful how after all of these years of marriage, you can still call your wife such loving names. The old man hung his head and said, You know, I have to tell you the truth. I forgot her name about ten years ago. It may sound strange to say this, but perhaps one of the most serious obligations that we have as Christians is to remember, to remember. There are stories in the Old Testament in which God took the people to task for not remembering. The most famous being the chastising of the Jewish people for their failure to remember that the Lord had led them out of slavery. This day, we remember that Jesus ordains the first priests of the church. And we're blessed to have a good number of priests here. So, Father John, you've been ordained how many years? 28 years. Father Mike? 53 years. Monsignor? 58. 58 years. Gosh, incredible. Almost over 130 years of priesthood here. It's wonderful. What a blessing. So this day we remember also that Jesus instituted the living memorial of the Last Supper. A memorial of God's awesome love poured out in Jesus' body and blood. For many Catholics, the thought that the Eucharist might be simply symbolic is rather disturbing. And in fact, that's true. The 20th century Catholic writer Flannery O'Connor wrote in a letter of an incident she, in a, of a dinner party where one of the guests explained how she thought of the Eucharist as simply a symbol. And she implied that although it was a very attractive and powerful symbol, it was just a symbol. To this, Flannery O'Connor replied, well, if it's just a symbol, to hell with it. Friends, ever since Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, we know that it's the real thing. This day we remember the real and abiding presence of Christ in the sacrament of His body and blood. You know, we've heard from so many of you that your inability to receive the true body and blood of Jesus in the Eucharist during this time of social distancing has been profoundly difficult and it's been a hardship and that's edifying to know friends this day we also remember that we are sent each and every Eucharist we are sent to love and to serve the Lord and one another as Saint Augustine said every time we approach the Eucharist, we are transformed into Jesus. That is we would, we, that's what we like to focus on. Every time we approach the Eucharist, we are transformed into Jesus. In his rather provocative autobiography, Angela's Ashes, Frank McCourt tells of a confession he once made as a young boy in Limerick, Ireland. His mother had just given birth and their in-laws from the north had sent money to buy milk for the new baby. But his father, an alcoholic, had taken the money and was drinking it up in the pubs. His mother had sent him, a young boy, to find his father and bring him home. But young Frankie couldn't find his father. What he finds instead is a drunken sailor in a pub, asleep, 
with a largely untouched plate of fish and chips in front of him. Ravenously hungry, he takes the fish and chips outside and eats them. Then, feeling guilty for stealing, he decides he had better go to confession. It's Saturday afternoon and he goes to the church and confesses to a priest that he stole fish and chips from a drunken man. The priest asks him why he had done this. And Frankie answers that he was hungry and there is not a scrap of food in their house and that his mother is angry because his father is drinking away the money he meant to buy for the new baby. The priest, hearing all of this, suddenly becomes very quiet. Instead of scolding Frankie and giving him a penance, he does something else. McCourt's words are these. I wonder if the priest is asleep because he's very quiet till he says, My child, I sit here, I hear the sins of the poor, I assign the penance, and I bestow the absolution. But I should be on my knees washing the feet of the poor. Go pray for me. He blesses me in Latin, talks to himself in English, and I wonder what I did to him. Friends, these words wonderfully describe one of the central meanings of the Eucharist. We should be on our knees washing each other's feet because that is precisely what Jesus did at the first Eucharist. And he did it to teach us that the Eucharist is not a private act of devotion, but a call to love, a call to service. Some time ago, Pope Francis spoke of the Eucharist, saying, As bread and wine are converted into the body and blood of the Lord, so those who receive them with faith are transformed into a living Eucharist. Here, the Pope said, is the real wonder of communion. We become what we receive. We become what we receive. An old church hymn often used to send people forth from church put it this way. Called from worship into service, forth in his great name we go, to the child, the youth, the aged, love and living deeds to show. Why didn't you sing it? That's because you're too young. You don't remember how it goes. Called from worship into service, forth in his great name we go. To the child, the youth, the aged, love in living deeds to show. Beautiful. Beautiful. This wonderfully expresses not what Father John sang, the Eucharist, what the Eucharist is meant to do, it's called to move us from worship to service, to take the nourishment, the embrace, the kiss that we've just received from God and translate it immediately and directly into loving service for others. To take the Eucharist seriously is to begin to wash the feet of others, especially the feet of those most in need, the poor. The Eucharist challenges us to step down from pride, away from self-interest, and to turn the mantle of privilege into the apron of service, so as to help reverse the world's order of things wherein pride, status, and self-interest are forever the straws that stir the drink. We see this happening in so many ways during this time of crisis. People willing to put on that apron of service, which we now call PPEs, personal protection equipment. People putting that on in order to serve others, those most, most in need. You may remember that today used to be called Maundy Thursday. The term Maundy comes from the Latin mandanta meaning command. In today's scripture, Jesus speaks of a commandment. Having absolutely startled the, his disciples by washing their feet, 
He said to them, You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. And later in this same conversation, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. If Jesus commands us to do something, we should certainly take it seriously. There is more than one way to be obedient to the mandate of Jesus, although we will not actually perform the rite of foot washing as part of our Lord's Supper observance. The core of this text tells us when we obey the command of Jesus, we are really saying that there is no task so menial, no service so difficult, no need so off-putting that we will not do for each other, and also for those whom Jesus elsewhere referred to as the least among us, the least among us. So we encourage you at home after Mass to wash each other's feet. Really do that, even though we're not able to do it here in church, which is normally a part of this Mass, we encourage you to do that with one another. Such an intimate task, but something that's profoundly deep. Why? Why do that? Well, because Jesus turned the world upside down when He took the role of a servant and He washed the disciples' feet. The Master washed the disciples' feet. In the washing of the feet, Jesus turns the mantle of privilege that comes from being the Son of God into the apron of service, transforming the world with humble love. You see, Jesus shows us that when we recognize Him in the Eucharist, when we have internalized Him in our lives, we powerfully make Him truly present in the world by a simple act of washing feet, simple acts of service that make Jesus real. So the question tonight, today, is this. Are you willing to take off your outer garment? Are you willing to lay down your mantle of privilege? For us, it may not be a mantle of privilege. It may instead be a mantle of pride or jealousy. Maybe it's anger or selfishness, laziness or greed. Whatever our mantle is, can we lay it down and replace it with the apron of service? Because when we take off our outer garment, then all the things are possible for us in and through God. Someone once said, when we are young, we think we can change the world by sheer force of will. We march for our causes, we speak out to be heard, we protest and write letters. But as we grow in spiritual maturity, we may realize that the way to change the world is to put down our placards and pick up a towel and a basin. My friends, on this Holy Thursday, look into the mirror that is Jesus Christ in his sacred body and blood, look there until you see your own image reflected in the face of Jesus. Then become that mirror for the world, reflecting the face of Christ to all who see your face. Reflecting Christ through your own humble, simple acts of service to one another. Put on the apron of service, and follow the example that Jesus has given us, the example that the apostles have left us, the example that we are called to follow. My friends, today we remember that Jesus is real. Let us be filled once again with the real and abiding presence of Christ 
in the sacrament of his body and blood. And let us become his real and abiding presence in our world today. Our vocation as Christian disciples includes not only loving service, but also praying for one another. Tonight we remember those who suffer and all who hunger for justice and peace. Let us pray for the church that each one of us may live like Jesus and spend our lives in selfless love, carrying the burdens and healing the pain of one another. Let us pray for Pope Francis. May he be blessed with good health and long life, and that through his sacred words and actions, he may inspire the faithful to work together to bring about the reign of God. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer from poverty, May they be lifted from their pain through the efforts and outreach of this community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all priests, that they may be renewed by God's love and faithfully follow the example of Jesus, the great high priest, leading us in worship, witness, and selfless service. We pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, for all who are tirelessly working to care for them, and for all who have lost loved ones during this pandemic that God will bring healing, strength, and comfort, and an end to this disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of our ancestors, hear the prayers of your people. May our prayer be a sign of service in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today's collection is for the...
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as, as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember your servants, Lord, <clears throat> whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. <coughs> Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and of blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, <coughs> Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood 
for His disciples to celebrate. Order our days in Your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those You have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of Your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before He was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, He took bread in His holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to You, O God, His Almighty Father, giving You thanks, He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is My body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, 
Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. United in faith, we turn to our Father in heaven as we offer the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be pure.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.